Hey, my name is Lizzie Smiley, and I absolutely love helping people connect with their calling and all the tools they need to kick roadblocks and excuses right out the door so they can cultivate the life they dream about. If you want to launch, grow, pivot, or scale your Etsy shop, or you've always wanted to develop the mindset and skills to run your own business, then I'm your girl. I've had that entrepreneurial spirit going strong since my very first lemonade stand. And now I'm a work at home mama with multiple online companies and a full-time Etsy shop, all while being present with my kids for the everyday chaos and most important milestones. On this podcast, we'll talk about all things business, mindset, Etsy, creativity, dazzling our customers, and so much more. There's plenty of room at this table for you. So scooch on in and let's go. I'm holding nothing back. Welcome to How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. I'm so glad you're here. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy podcast this week. I'm so glad you're here. It is a good week. And before I introduce today's guest, I want to remind you to send me your FAQs. So I'm working on a podcast episode coming up where I am just going to do a whole episode of answering your questions. So send them to me, whatever it is, I will get to as many as I possibly can. You can send them to me on Instagram via DM um, or TikTok, uh, just in the, uh, look for the actual TikTok that has the, <laughs> that has like the, give me your FAQs, or you can comment on any of them. I'll kind of be watching for just really commonly asked questions. And you can also email them to me at lizziesmiley at yahoo.com. So Instagram and TikTok are at how to sell your stuff. And um, Lizzie is spelled L-I-Z-Z-I-E. So Lizzie Smiley at yahoo.com. Send me your FAQs and we will get through as many as we can. I definitely want to hear from you, interact with you, get you the information that you are needing right now for your goals. So, okay, I'm excited. Today I have Amy Horror of Amy Lucy Designs on the podcast. She is she is such a doll. You're going to enjoy her so much. She's from the UK. So we all get to just um, soak up that amazing accent for the next several minutes here. It's going to be beautiful. But she is also a super, super successful Etsy and e-commerce woman. Honestly, she amazes me. So she just started in her bedroom <laughs> with a little jewelry shop. And now um, she's based out of a seven um, 700 square foot warehouse with a full manufacturing and marketing and warehouse team. Yes, she has like a team of employees. She not only has an Etsy shop, but she's on Amazon and eBay and has her own website. The story is really cool. And she's been featured all over the place in magazines and countless blogs. So she, um, on Etsy, she has the global sales rank of number 18 on E-Rank. So if you like to do your little research on E-Rank, you'll find Amy Lucy Designs, number 18 on E-Rank. Um, if you uh, like to follow the UK specifically, there's a website called Etsy Hunt. And um, she was number three in the UK in handmade shops. So um, on Etsy Hunt. So that she, I mean, she's just like no slouch. And um, she is, oh, oh, obviously knowing that she has, she makes well over six figures in her business. They've had over 280,000 sales and they've got more than 10,000 followers on social media. So we're going to have such a great conversation. She, um, what I really love about Amy is she's like so here to help you guys. Like she is just really excited to have the chance to encourage you. She's got a lot to share about, um, you know, doing business from the UK, which is different for us. She's going to talk to us um, about scaling a business, which I think is really important because that can be such a stumbling block for so many. So enough about Amy. She will tell you so much more about herself and do it way better than me. Help me welcome Amy to the podcast this week. Hey, Amy, welcome to the show. Hi, Lizzie. I'm, I'm very... so glad you're here. Yes. And everyone's going to be drooling over your accent for the next however many minutes we stay on here. <laughs> very nice. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here with you. Um, I honestly, I, as busy as you are and as much as you have going on, I couldn't believe you said yes, but I'm so glad you did because I, I think you have a lot of really unique stories and perspectives and you're in the UK. There's so much about you and your business that like needs to be on this podcast. So a million thank yous. I'm so grateful. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so. I um, I was getting a little bit, a little bit emotional there, if I'm really honest. Lizzie, I'm honestly just super grateful. That's the only thing I'm feeling right now. It's just, <laughs> just super grateful. So thank you. You've made the whole thing really nice. 
Um, you're a doll and we were immediate friends. Like this whole thing was just like planned in the stars ahead of us. So, <laughs> so I'm so glad we're both here, like overwhelmed with gratitude. And that's amazing. And so I just like, I just know our listeners are going to eat this up. So we have mm-hmm. to start at the very beginning because your beginning is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> tell us, tell us a bit of your story. Like even before Etsy, like what, who are you? Where are you from? What is your professional background? What do we need to know to like see this bigger picture that you're going to bring us? So I am from the Midlands in, in, in a place called Stoke-on-Trent. It's like a small town. Um, and I, it's actually called the Potteries. It's called the Potteries, and it's where Spode and all the famous pottery actually is from. Um, oh. And it's really weird because pottery is is my passion. It's it's my true passion is pottery, and that's where all my ancestors are from. And and I and I just love that because that is it's in my roots. It's just being creative is just completely who I am. Like there was never another option to me. That was just always what I was was gonna be. And I I um I love being creative. I love product design. I love I just love all of that. I, I just love it. Okay, so you have been like literally throwing mud around since you were a little kid, probably. <laughs> yeah, I as a young girl I actually had um, dolls houses and I'd design the houses and I'd make little lampshades and so I've always just been interested in in products, really, and, and decorating huh. and making things look pretty and and just creating it. It like just flows. It just flows from me. It's the it's the only thing really that yeah, as well as music actually. But yeah, I, I just have a lot of creativity in me, I guess. <laughs> so when you first set out as a young adult, what what was your career path going to be? Um. It's a tricky one because when I was at university um, studying ceramics, like I said, I knew that a lot of my friends were going to open up their own workshop, making their own ceramics um, to sell. And at that age, I just knew I wasn't ready. And I also knew that making my own products to sell in a workshop myself just was not the right path for me. Um, I wasn't very, I wasn't in the, very arty box I was more um for the masses box which is really strange um, place to be because you're not you don't feel like a true artist because you want to design products for the masses yes difficult I just Um, feel very seen I feel very seen by you saying that it's weird right because we're supposed to be these super artsy and we are we have this massive creative side we live in the art but there's something in us that wants to like sees a bigger picture, not, not in a bat, not in like a better, bigger is better. Just, it's a different, it's a whole different mindset. It's a different, it's a different type of creativity, I think, because you have, obviously have your artists that want to paint. Um, but then you have people that just want to create and, and I, and I love that, that, that is just, yeah, that is, that's what I am. So, um, I set up, you know, I, went through lots of different stages and different things and I had my I had my time where I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do so I started doing a bit of ceramics at home making a little bit of jewelry and um in 2011 I don't know if you want me to go into that now but in 2011 yeah. I, I opened my Etsy shop that's why I opened it and I started to make little bits of jewelry then um I had my children at home and um, I just felt that that was something I could do at that time. Um, so that's what I was doing at that, that point. Um, okay. Took- yeah, no, go ahead. I, Cause I want to hear, I definitely want, like you have all of our time and attention. Like I want to hear the journey of the twists and turns of your Etsy shop journey. Like how, you know, we, it's actually amazing. Most of us Etsy shop owners did not go to go to university for, our craft. So that's amazing that you literally started there, but then into the jewelry. So what were the different twists and turns? Like your very first Etsy shop, you were, you were literally handmaking jewelry. Um, yeah, I was handmaking jewelry because I was into ceramics and I only had a very small kiln. And so I started the jewelry and to be honest, it didn't really, it didn't really take off. I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't doing even SEO or any of that. Um, and I was at home with my children. I was running a shop with my husband, um, 
to make money to cover our mortgage. So it was just that little bit of things that I was trying to do. I was trying to do something because as creatives, you know, you've got to do something creative. Yes. Um, but when you're at home with, with children, it's it's tough. That has to come first, doesn't it? You're, you're a mother first. Um, so I, I did that first and I started to design lots and lots of patterns, lots and lots of patterns. And my husband said to me, um, Amy, you know, you've got to do something with these patterns now. <laughs> and I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> um, but years earlier, when I was dating my husband, I was going to study a master's um, to go to go to London and study there. And I came out of the of the um, of the study hall and he was there with the biggest bunch of flowers for me. And that, and that that just broke my heart and I and I thought I can't move to London and not be with this guy. Um, so that was it. Um, I went back, I married him and that's when we opened the shop together. Um, it was actually his father's party business and we, we worked in the business in the shop, but we um, pretty soon realized we didn't want to be in a shop, me and my husband. So we set up a hem party business, um, a website. So that's what we did first. This is all like in tangent of having kids and starting my Etsy shop and all these different things were happening. Um, so we set up the website from our home and um, we had a bedroom it was all in we used to take the sacks of things to the postman and you know that was that was interesting so the postman hated you when you arrived with like <laughs> loads of parcels uh, so that's what we kind of did first and then because I had the hem party business there we printed a lot of personalized products already within the hem party business Amy Lucy hadn't started yet um, and my husband said, like I told you, to go and do something with all these designs now you've done. And I said, and I thought, right, well, the only things that I have accessible to me at the moment are all these printing machines at the hem part with the hem party business. And I thought to myself, this might not be what I'm going to do in the future. It might not be everything I wanted, but I'm going to just go and do it. So um, I designed these mirrors first of all, these little pocket mirrors we make they're about this size um and I designed lots of those with all my patterns on with the name on and I put those on first of all so in that was in 2017 I started to sell these mirrors and as I started to sell more and more and more as I got busier and busier and I'd add other product ranges like gift bags that we do on the hemp party site but my own designs and then I might start adding, I can't remember, bags, tote bags. I started to sell those because we did those on the hem party. And then a few t-shirts because we did those on the hem party. But in my style, and it was really lovely to see your designs coming through and, you know, making them and sending them off. And it was lovely. Um, but as I got busier in 2018, um, I was just getting busier and busier. And then by 2019... My husband was like, we've got to put the business together. It's just too, it's too busy. I can't run them separately anymore. So huh. as I got busier, what was happening is I wanted to do it all myself. I wanted to make absolutely everything myself, wrap it up really nicely, make sure it was perfect and send it out to the customers. Um, but as I got busier, I couldn't physically do it all myself anymore. And that was... That was a tough time. I remember my husband saying, you've got to let go. You've got to let, you've got to trust the staff to make these items. And I found it really difficult because, you know, it's your baby. You don't want to give control. You don't want to, you don't want to trust someone else to make it. You want to do it yourself. Um, so I had to release that little bit of control a bit at a time. You know, when you see things going out wrong, it's like, this is wrong. And then you'd moan at your husband. I told you this wouldn't work. And, um, but... <laughs> Yeah, eventually it went to the makers and the, and the makers, they they sent it out and they, they made it because the business was, was together. Um, and now, you know, I, like I said, I'm just filled with grateful thanks. I'm just so grateful for each customer. Like, I'm just so grateful for everything. Okay, so I have what might be a dumb question. Um I, I have been wondering, is hen party business just what the name was of your business? Or is that a type of thing in the UK that maybe I just don't know what that oh. means? <laughs> okay, you call it bachelorette. 
Bachelorette. Bachelorette. Oh yeah. my gosh. I'm so glad I asked. That is just. Oh, of course. Oh. Okay. That exceeded every expectation you could have possibly. <gasps> Bachelorette oh, party. Hen Bachelorette hen party. party. So we were doing I like your name house. better. Yeah. So we're doing lots of hen party mirrors and badges and stickers and all of these products. Mark was already, well, both of us, we were already producing, you know, so um that was just the natural place for me to start with my Etsy shop so you're right well we're making these surely I can make these prettier oh. in my designs and surely you know I can get this to work so that's what we did I kind of slotted that in and yeah it, it's been a long gold road really with that I know that that has been for a lot of people a really I mean now it's very a very busy one but a very um great niche to be in because People go to Etsy to shop for Bachelorette all the time. That is a riot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm also really curious because I have not had a chance to talk to anyone in the UK about this before. Um, it sounds like everything really, really ramped up for you in 2017, 18, and 19, which is interesting. That is the that is the same trajectory that my shop was on, um, obviously in totally different product lines, but that's really yeah. interesting. So yeah. I want to know, what was it like for you during COVID? Like when COVID hit lockdowns came shipping became more difficult everything what happened to your business during that time um covid was as you know for everyone it was it was very an emotional time wasn't it for everyone absolutely um, so on march 17th um i know the day because it was my husband's birthday hem party had just completely died overnight sorry bachelor oh, had died yes. wedding they're just of course died um and that was our big part of our business was that um, and amy lucy was big but not big enough really at that point so that had all died and we had all the staff in the office and we said listen guys really sorry that we've got to do this on mark's birthday there's no work you've all got to go home we said we don't know what's going to happen um obviously we're all in lockdown and yeah so we we sent all the staff home and it's a really worrying time because you don't know, you're dependent on it for your income, aren't you, to survive. You don't know what, what's going to happen if you've got to just sell all the business off. And, we, we, yeah, we just didn't know. But then a little bit time later, my and Amy Lucy just started to go really busy. So we were desperately phoning all the staff back up saying, you've got to come back in, you've got to come back in. Because we had literally rows of products waiting to be made and dispatched and it it was really busy for us but what was sorry I'm so emotional today I am a really emotional person as you can tell what was really <laughs> lovely at that time was that we were making these um hug in a box boxes um a hug, in like, a box? hug in a box yeah. a hug in a box I want a hug in a box oh my gosh <laughs> So do I. I should have got myself one. Yeah, um, yeah I didn't. And uh, what was really lovely with these that we were we were printing off the messages that people were sending to each other. So you you know you might have a, a you know really sad that I'm missing your birthday. Um, let's have have a big celebration when it's over. Please take care and we love you. <laughs> and all these lovely messages you got to read and um, you know it's just a really emotional time for everyone but that that was special that was really special that you knew you were doing something of goodness somewhere you know for these people so and then i was really grateful that the business thrived in in that um in that really difficult time i was i was, I was really grateful that's amazing also you just had this like kudos to your your creativity because you had to pivot that overnight <laughs> yeah yeah, I mean, like, so when the wedding kind of stopped and the hemp, the Amy Lucy just jumped right up, you know, to replace what was missing. And, you know, we're just so grateful for that. Really grateful. That's just amazing. How do you guys handle shipping over there? Um, I mean, well, I guess the first question needs to be, do you, are where are most of your orders coming from? <laughs> because yeah, I'm just so, thinking about, you know, like our shipping was astronomical. I didn't even ship outside of the U.S. because of that. And worrying about customs. So how do you how do you manage that from So our shipping, we we have a lot to UK obviously in Ireland. Um we do the US, 
We're a lot to the US. I mean, we ship worldwide, but these are the bigger places. Australia is quite good for us. Um, so there is a few countries that are quite strong for us. But with our shipping, we I don't do free shipping. On a product that is £2, I can't possibly put £4 within that price Um, because someone is buying six gift bags and they're paying £4 too much each gift bag. It just doesn't work for me. Um, So we just haven't, we haven't done that. And I do feel a little bit penalised sometimes by Etsy for not maybe possibly on the American side. I'm, I'm not sure, but we just, we just, we just never have. But with our shipping, we... We've kept it quite simple through trial and error, really. Um, I mean, we've we've tried doing a shipping on a cheaper option, but now we yeah. only do it on the on the higher option, so that the customers can have a better service and it's tracked, and you know it's going to arrive okay. Um, and then another thing we've done is, if the country doesn't have a very good infrastructure in that con- country for it to get there safely, we just don't ship there. Okay. Um, so we've kept it all quite simple, really. But yeah, the free shipping debate is is a d- big debate for me that I can't quite get my head around. So well, to be honest, I, I'm very encouraged that you don't offer as a shop of your size, of your revenues. Uh, the fact I'm very encouraged that you've chosen for because you have to watch your bottom line. You've chosen yeah. not to do free shipping and it's worked out. And yeah, you sit there and you're like, I, okay, I can see how this is maybe affecting me a bit in the algorithm, but yeah. not enough for you to choose yeah. no. to, you know, like you're just, you're doing the right thing for your product, for your shop. And I think that's, you know, we, we sit here as especially the, the really small newer shops. I, I do a lot of coaching. I personally did the free shipping, but I only shipped in the U S and I, um, and I, um, built it into the cost and I was able to do that, but it was very, it was very difficult and I did have to make constant tweaks. Um, and I did have to watch it like a hawk and, and, and typically I I got very close to taking losses. So I'm thinking about you with, with products of all different sizes shipping all over the world. I just think for the new shop owner, it's got to feel very encouraging to, because we sit there and we're like, well, what do we know? How do we, we can look at a shop of your size and if you can get away with, you know, choosing that, maybe we can too, you know, maybe we can do what feels right for our bottom line. I think possibly if you've got everything else in place, then it won't hurt you too much. But yeah, uh, like I say, play around with it, try it, test it test it for your shop, test it for your products, but we, we just never have. And you, obviously um, the prices went up for America by about £4, I think, a few about a year ago, and that that affected it. But then the Brexit comes in and then we, you know, we get new rules for that. So it's constantly changing. Shipping is yes. a, it's something, like you say, you've got to keep your eye on it. It's constantly changing. We have certain products that have different brackets. They're more expensive because they're bigger and, so it's, it's a bit of a game, you know, that you've got to play. It is. And I do coach that, you know, when you're a brand new shop, you're not established yet in the algorithm. You don't have the sales and the reviews and all of that. So sometimes you do have to, um, in the beginning, maybe even take a little bit of a loss and maybe you yeah. need to do the free shipping for a little while and ride it really close or break even so that you can just get established. Just like a new restaurant is it going to expect to take a, yeah. a loss for the first at least two to three years, you know, knowing that they're going to they're not going to be making the money, but the idea is they're building up their customer base. They're building up their um, reputation and all of that. So I, I, I think, I think it's fascinating. I was really encouraged to hear that you've, you've done that. Um, okay. I also, I, I was so excited. One of the things I was so excited with you is that you have this huge, successful, established shop and you are still making physical products. And I literally want to get up and dance about it because you know, these days, and and I don't blame them. You know, we live in a really busy, hectic world and finding ways to make passive income. I am here for that. You and I, before that we even started recording, I told you that's, you know, a huge passion of mine. Um, But on Etsy, I'm really into the, I I love the physical product. I love the gift. I love the, I go, I don't go to Etsy really for digital stuff. I go there to find a really special gift for someone. So I love that you have chosen this. So, but I, but it like takes a lot of work. So can you talk, (laughs) A bit about why you choose to continue on that path and just tell us more of that story. Um, well, like I said, I, from being a young girl creating things in a doll's house, I, I want to create physical things. And, it, and it's more than that. Amy, Lucy, we, 
we try and hit those marketplaces where you can't find the perfect thing. I have this customer that comes to me all the time. Um, she's a real <laughs> true, you know, follower of Amy Lucy. And she'll message me at Christmas and she'll say, Amy, can you make me a gift bag for my dog to give to his friend and dog? And Stop I mean, it. Honestly. I, mean, I want to be just, friends with her. Doesn't that just melt your heart? And I'm just Absolutely. like, I love you, you know, and, and, and it's things like that. I, I think a digital item for me, we do want to go into digital more. Um, mm-hmm. We've done certain things. We've got designs ready. There's a place for it. But for us, we are one of our goals is to create these products to give to someone that makes them happy. And I don't feel you can do that the same with a digital product um in as as well let's say as well as um you know as easily so for us we we like to make the physical product but it's tough going it's it's tough going it's a lot of work but i love that um my study at university was studying gifts and what gifts mean and what the meaning that behold that they, they hold and i went to people's homes and i spoke to them about their gifts and what they have on display and and that within that study you know you'll learn that it's not always about the actual product it's about the meaning behind it so people would say to me yeah well I've got this on display and to be honest it doesn't really match my room but I display it because it reminds me of this person and it means something to me and and I love that because honestly we're just trying to make people happy and I know that's so cliche like no it's not <laughs> but we 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 actually are we're trying to just make people happy and feel and feel loved by by receiving something that is special to them today's podcast is brought to you by the perfecting pinterest e-course by sophia lee Okay, so I'm particularly excited about today's sponsor because if you use this resource correctly, you could completely blow up your Etsy shop with sales. No joke. If there was ever a game changer for Etsy success, it is Pinterest and learning how to master it. Before I tell you more, you need to know I have quite literally spent over $1,000 on Pinterest courses over the years, several thousand on blogging courses. And I learned a ton. Most of them were valuable. I don't have a whole bunch of regrets. But earlier this year, I was introduced to the blogger, Sophia Lee, who started her blog in college and has killed the game. Four years later now, she's earning 70000 plus per month, per month from her blog. I was intrigued. <laughs> so I bought her blogging e-course and her Pinterest Pinterest e-course because A, I was curious about her strategy since her blog is so lucrative. And B, I could not believe how reasonable the price was. Like, wow, compared to what I have spent before, it was an absolute steal. I also have a blog in addition to my Etsy shop. And so I learned early on that Pinterest is the most powerful way to get readers to your blog. And it's one of the best free ways to drive traffic to your Etsy shop. So the reason I'm partnered with Sophia Lee today is because I went through her Pinterest course and it was outstanding. I'm not kidding. Outstanding. It was packed with so much value. I would recommend it to my best friend. I already recommended it to my mom who took it and loved it. And I have zero reservations recommending it to you either. So if you have not tried promoting your Etsy listings on Pinterest, which is some of the best free traffic you can get, or you still need to learn how to build strategy for Pinterest, I cannot recommend perfecting Pinterest enough. Sophia Lee built her Pinterest course to teach bloggers how to promote their posts, but what you'll learn directly applies to your Etsy listings too. In all the places where she is linking a blog post, you'll do the same with your Etsy listings. I feel confident you'll get a ton of value out of it, You can grab my link down in the show notes and check out the course info today. It's immediately available to you. And I am so excited to see what a difference it makes. That is authentic, powerful branding is what that is. That that doesn't come from a marketing ploy or some self. It's literally the sweetest thing. I think it is. I think if more of us had that, we could really like Etsy could be what it what it started out to be. So no, it's not cheesy at all. I'm like, bring on the emotion (laughs) because you're just trying to create a feeling, which is, is both lovely in a world that needs it 
yeah. a little more kindness, a little like we're looking for that touch. I remember what I did the um, beginning of the year, 2022, it may have been in the, it may have been actually in December. And I did a podcast episode talking about the trends that were going to be really powerful for 2022 in, in particular. And of course we talked about, you know, emerald being the color of the year. And we talked about pink and all different things, but there was such a huge emphasis in um, everything that I researched about coming back to this place of something that you can touch, like something that's high quality that you can touch that has meaning and people be, even being willing to spend a little more again on fewer things, but, but like that really special thing. So I, I personally think you're a genius, but I also know you and this comes from the purest place of liter Like, I'm sorry, who comes up with a hug in a box during COVID? <laughs> Mimi Lucy does. That's who. I cannot. <laughs> That's very cute. I cannot. Y'all are so freaking cute. Um, okay, so we should talk about we should talk about you and your husband too because you work closely together, we just do. like my husband and me. Yeah. And so like that either re works really well or it works really badly. So tell us about your little your cute little work love story. Well, I hate him. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> so you know what people people ask me all the time. They say, "Oh goodness, how do you work with your husband?" I say, "I could not work with my husband. I, I love toddling off to work together every day, and he's not there." And you know, and honestly, it confuses me because I'm like, "Well, my husband's my best friend. Why would I not want to work with my husband?" You know, so it it is like you're working with your best friend, and and, and I just. You know, we actually really enjoy it. And um, someone asked us just the other day, actually, we were at a friend's house and they said, like, do you regret doing what you do? And, and I didn't really understand why they'd ask me that really. For but, real. Yeah, like, if you do it again, would you do it again? And, and, I'm, and I've pondered that and I thought, you know what, if I had a choice, I would do it exactly the same. Obviously, I've made different decisions over the mistakes we've made, but we, we both love what we do. We... Um, the flexibility it gives, it, it, yeah, we, we love it. Um, it's an obsession, I would say. <laughs> but I think your own, your own business is, is your own, it's yours, it's your baby, it's important, you've made it. It's something, you know, I talked about being a creative, it's something I've made and, it, you know, it, it, means, it means so much to me. And it's nice that I can share that with Mark and I know that he, now we're creating a new Emily Lucy building, we're moving, he, he's so excited to create that for me because um, when we were early married, we went off to this art show. You know, my husband is an artist. He isn't an arty kind of no, guy. Okay. He's a sporty guy. So he didn't really ever understand my art. My art was these recycled furniture with drawers and lots of prints, and he did not get it. Well, we went to an art show, and this lady was buying this cup for £60. It was tiny, you know. And he was like, mm, yeah, I quite like this art thing. I think you should do this. <laughs> so once you realise, oh, they might get a bit of money from this. Maybe I should help her. But but now, in, in all honesty, he he gets joy from doing things that makes me happy as well. And, and he, he does. He said, I'm really excited to build this this new building for you, for it to be Amy Lucy, for it to be beautiful. And so, yeah, it works. It, it just works. We, we enjoy working. I'd recommend it, actually. <laughs> I would too. I think you guys are extremely sweet. I, I from everything you and I've talked about, I think our husbands are a lot alike, like, and our and our relationships are a lot alike. That's it's very sweet. How do you guys break up the um, the type of work? Like, are you doing the same projects together every day, or do you have kind of a division of uh, responsibilities? Or so I always say to people that I do the pretty stuff, and Mark does the really <laughs> difficult stuff. That and that that's just the truth of it. So if anyone. <laughs> like hiring or letting go or if people need a bit of a telling off you know or if you've got to phone the bank or you know all those taxes and all that really hard stuff then that's Mark's job all the pretty easier stuff is my job <laughs> and it works you know I bet that does work. Yeah. Being, being able to have your separate responsibilities it you can build towards something together and there's no struggling yeah. Uh, struggling match. Yeah, we probably have quite That's clear roles, I would so say. So funny. I and do all the stuff as and well, he does all the hard stuff. Yeah, I'll be at home taking, being being a mom, I'm more of a mom, so then he, he's he got the team at work and he's got him doing all the, does that make sense? Yes. So that really, it allows me to be mom because cause I'm here as, as mom. Oh. 
Okay, so we also we ha- we absolutely have to talk about scaling because I think of everyone I've ever talked to, you have done this the most profoundly and the most beautifully. Um, you literally took this from making jewelry in your home with a small kiln to a warehouse that is now being expanded. You've got a pretty serious operation. So I would really like to hear and learn from you a bit about the process of scaling like that. Um, you know, also from the story, like tell us the story of it, but also if you have any nuggets of wisdom in there, um, for those of us who are, you know, maybe looking at how to figure out that, you know, how to scale. That was always really difficult for me because I, I, I couldn't seem to teach anybody to paint as accurately as I could. (laughs) Yeah. So it is a big thing and you, honestly, you, you've got to be brave. I would say you've got Hmm. to be brave to scale up it. It's a risk, first of all you've got to be brave and you've got to go for it but one of the probably the most important things is that you've got to let go a little bit um and trust the people that you have um, don't be a control not, freak is that not micromanage them because <laughs> that doesn't work um but a really important thing is to have systems you're only going to be able to do it if you have systems in place that that's the only way of doing it so when i walk into mcdonald's i know you all have a mcdonald's um, I can see that in McDonald's, they have a number system. They'll have a place for a certain item. They'll have a place for a, another certain item. They'll have a shelf for a, a certain way of doing something. They'll have a place where the number item then goes. And then does that make sense? Like everything yes. needs a process, absolutely everything. And then when something breaks down within that process, you know that that process isn't good yet. So you go back and you work on that process, you change it, you monitor it, and and you fix that process. And if you can build processes in your whole business, you can scale it right up. And that, that to me, is is the most important thing, is to have all those processes in place and to trust people. Um, And then things do go wrong and things will go wrong. You've you've got to just go back, go back again, you know, and and redo it. That, That, I'd say, is is really important and because within our business we have a lot of different systems we have a whole we have a whole system when i started etsy they didn't even have sq skus oh SKUs. oh my gosh they didn't even have them uh, within our hen party business we already did and my husband was like surely they have SKUs," and i'm like I, you know i said they don't have them yet so your only option really was to include it in the title. I don't know if you remember this all these years ago. Is to put a skew right at the end of it, like a number. Oh, the end of the title, my gosh. Because yes. it wasn't within the product. So it's things like that, that you need to know what all your designs are called. It's got to have a file name. You need to, it was only, what Christmas was it? Not last Christmas, was one before we we were selling out of these teddy bears. And then we'd sold, we couldn't get any more. We had to phone you know, 100 customers and say, I'm really sorry, they're not coming in. Can you, do you want this instead? Nightmare situation. Obviously, oh gosh. nightmare. I think that was COVID Christmas. Um, and after that, Christmas was like, right, this is a system we've got to fix. It's our stock system within the Etsy platform. So now we have a system that manages our whole stock. So it manages the website, it manages Etsy, it manages eBay, it manages Amazon, the whole stock feeds through to all of those all of those places so if you sell those 10 bears you know they've gone you're not going to sell more of those 10 bears so it 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 really is about building those systems within your business to just to keep you it just makes it easier that is crazy and would you agree like there is never it is never too early to start building systems no no I, I remember when I first started these mirrors, I used to just give them random numbers like 01 and then 09 and then 29. And, and a, one of the girls came to me, she said, Amy, this is a sheet, you know, use the numbers on here, stop making up the numbers. <laughs> I used to drive her insane. But yeah, it, it's a bit of a, to me, that's a creative, that side is quite a, a boring side to me. Yes. It's more, you're not as interested, you know, I'll just make up the numbers. But yeah, as we've gone on, it, it it's really important. It is really important. I know people have spreadsheets and watch their stock that way. And, um, but like I say, we, we have a system that does lots of things and then it manages the order and it manages it going through the warehouse and where it's going to be made and what product, what process it's going to go to. And then what, 
what bits it's going to use this vinyl and this vinyl and then this teddy bear and then it goes to the dispatch system and they'll dispatch it on the right you know so it, it goes through like a whole system to, to keep it organized i cannot i cannot <laughs> I, my brain can't process the plates that you have spinning in the air at every moment of every day. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. Okay. So it sounds like, um, when you want it, when, when you're going to plan on scaling your business, start by creating as many systems as you can early on. Yeah. yeah. Everything that has a good system will be able to be scaled yeah. and then, um, work on not being a control freak. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> releasing yeah. some of the ownership which actually the system should help you be able to do yes. and then choose to be brave and to trust your team yeah absolutely are those the main ones the main it, Lizzie. <laughs> oh, I'm a good student. okay good no i was just thinking man she dropped a lot there i need to see if i can summarize all of that because that was really yeah, I did. sorry it was a lot no of no not in a bad way i'm just saying like <laughs> holy cow we need to make sure that we're scooping up all the gold that you drop yeah. Um, I don't want to leave any of it on the ground. <laughs> okay. So, um, I'm probably about to make you emotional again, but that's okay. I, I was just so drawn to you right away, Amy, because you're, you're just like the antithesis of like the, maybe the ugly version of an entrepreneur. You have such a beautiful heart. You ha you care so much about people, about your customers, about your staff, about the quality. You just, you're just kind of a, a rare breed in today's marketplace. And so I know you love encouraging new entrepreneurs. That's something that we share in common. Like I get absolutely, I get more giddy about talking to someone who's thinking about some small business at a, at a cocktail party than like <laughs> anything else. Like, please, can we go stand in the corner and talk about your business idea, which they'll probably never do, but I get giddy, but I know you can, I know you, you feel the same way. So, um, what would you share with other creatives today if they need some encouragement, like no matter where they are on their journey, I just really want to kind of give you an open mic for that because I know it's a passion of yours too. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, like you say, I, I genuinely care. I, I really care. And for us creatives, I know it's in us and we just want to create and we want to do something, you know, and, and people come to me and say, I want to start this and I want to start this. And people are, are so scared. And I, and I just, I don't know how to like give to them a bit of my confidence and say, just go for it. You know, I wanted to say, go for it. So you've got to start it. You, you don't know where your, your dream might end. You don't know the end, but you've got to start less. Nothing is going to happen. Nothing will happen. Um, I was watching the dream home makeover the other day and the, and the guy had gone through a tough time and, and he said, don't wait for things to happen. You've got to make them happen. And I just thought that is just so true with starting a business. Don't wait for it to happen. You've got to make it happen. When we first started, we put just designs on T-shirts, you know, hand party site. We'd add these 50 designs. We might have one machine, a little bit of vinyl, not even the right colours. You know, we just put them on and we think, right, we're going to just put them on. I just want to put them on. We're going to start something. If they sell, they sell. If they don't, they don't. We'll, we'll deal with whatever comes you know, and they start to sell, you have to get the other colour vinyls in, you have to work on the process and you've really got to just make a start. And I know that, that that is such a big hurdle for people to have that confidence and particularly women, you know, I, I, I feel for women that are middle-aged or mums or trying to get back into work and, and they don't have the confidence. And um, I want people to just know that... They can achieve, but they've got to just start, make that start, make that first step. Um, Facebook now has some lovely groups that you can go on to for encouragement. And, you know, they're, they're all in the same boat and you can ask questions now, which is so nice. You've got people to say, well, how do I do this on this button? Or why is this not working? And, you know, use it, use it. And people, you, I don't, in my, in my vision, I don't have an end to where my business can go. And in, in a lot of ways, it's probably pretty dangerous because I say to my husband, I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do this. And, it, you know, he just nods. But I think it's a good it's a good way to be because you shouldn't limit yourself with anything. There's, in this world, there's no limitations. It's literally 
the world is your oyster like just go for it especially now with social media you, you can just get things out there um so much easier there's so much opportunity but you've got to take that opportunity and, and I love that and I love that I just want to encourage people to just go for it and if it doesn't work the first time try again and, and keep working yes. keep studying keep keep learning maybe adapting the product range a little bit and you got to just keep going that's what I would say I think more than any other skill um that you could take into your entrepreneurial journey it, it has to be this flexible I'm going to start and I'm going to try and I'm going to tweak and I'm going to change attitude. Yeah. I'm reminded of, I got an email yesterday from, um, someone, a, a woman going through a really hard time in her marriage and her, in her life generally. And she said to me, she said, Lizzie, I just can't invest in a, um, in a maybe. And I'm just like, <laughs> I, I know how that feels. I really do. And at the same time, if you don't, you may as well die. <laughs> yeah. Like, life. And I don't mean that harshly. I mean that yeah. like, let me be your real friend and tell you, you have to. Yeah. Like there's no, it. there's no, um, sure thing. No. There's no guaranteed anything no. in life. No, Everything is investing in a maybe. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. and you just, the most critical thing you can take with you is just that attitude. And, and I think, I, I think you can still keep it low stakes in the beginning, right? Like when you don't have it in you to take a big risk, you can keep it, yeah. keep it small, keep it low oh, stakes, yeah. test something really small. Yeah. Yeah. Use what's available. Like if you've got a friend that's got a sewing machine, start using that or, you know, you, I think use what's available. Don't go crazy. You don't, you don't need to. This, this oh my gosh, Amy, let me embarrass myself to you for a second. So when we were first starting our sign business, um, we did not have the money to go buy the fancy industrial cutter that we ended up buying. Um, and I did not have a cricket or anything like that. I kid you not, I have pictures of my husband at the kitchen table with sheets of thin plastic from Hobby Lobby. Uh, which is a craft store in the in the United States. And I had printed out designs I had made on paper on the printer and he has the designs under the plastic <laughs> and he is using an X-Acto knife to cut out the, the design. Oh. And then he literally created a stencil for me. I mean, you should have seen us trying to figure out how to use an X-Acto <laughs> knife to create a stencil because I didn't put the stencil on the design. He had to figure, it was ridiculous. And then I am sitting there with sponges, sponge painting this, terrible stencil onto a piece of wood i'm just saying you like make do and i'll but i'll tell you what those things actually sold <laughs> like, yeah not all of them you know some of them were they paint bled and it was ugly yeah. but some of them looked just rustic enough for like the farmhouse craze that people were all over it yeah. and i couldn't believe it i couldn't yeah. believe it it gave me so much confidence that i was just like oh this is gonna work yeah. you know gonna and then work. i was like okay let's spend the money and get the you know it kind of gave me that yeah. So anyway, super embarrassing. Like talk about starting out as a complete amateur. <laughs> oh my gosh. I will never get rid of those pictures. <laughs> Show us. Put it on your Instagram. I will have to. <laughs> I know they're sprinkled somewhere in my content, but like I will have to. It's too good. So tell us what's next for Amy Lucy Designs. Um, does that mean we're nearly finished, Lizzie? Because I don't want to leave you. Amy, we're ne you and I are never finished now. <laughs> Yeah. You're so stuck with me. <laughs> I feel like I've got loads more things to say to you. Um, next, Ray Lucy. So, yeah, so we're currently packing up our current warehouse. We've been there for five years. Um, we're currently trying to pack it up and organise it and sort it out to move to a new Amy Lucy building. And I'm I just, I'm so excited because the building is, is pretty you know it's it's all white inside and we've got these new plans and it's going to be Amy Lucy with lots of greenery and pinks and my patterns and it's just going to be so beautiful and it's almost like a clean slate for Amy Lucy so I haven't told you this yet but for Christmas this year um our business has always been called Blue Cockerel and underneath Blue Cockerel the business we have all these different websites okay um but for Christmas my husband gave me a, a letter that says now officially the whole business is called Amy Lucy. So now oh. it's Amy Lucy and then the web the websites are underneath. So now it's all Amy Lucy. So I'm super excited for that. And like I said to you before, I don't have 
I don't have limits on what I want to do. I said to Mark, I want to make my own candles in the kitchen or wherever. I want to make my own bars of soap because I've seen them and they're just so yummy and gorgeous on with little flowers yes. in them. But I want to do that. And I, and yeah, and eventually I'd like to be printing my own patterns and um, on fabrics and make, making little little girls skirts. And, you know, there's just, there's just so many things I want to do, Lizzie. <laughs> That's the best part, though, about what we do is that we never have to get bored. You know, I remember working in a corporate job and just feeling so sucked of any inspiration or energy because it was so redundant and repetitive and felt pointless. And it was so much of my time, you know, and we we get to be on this journey where every day can be. I mean, yes. Are there (laughs) when I sat there and painted 20 signs a day, it was very (laughs) redundant and my hands hurt a lot. And it was, you know, just like, when is this going to end? But I can, you can, you, you can pivot, you can change, you can try something new, you can go to something new. So I love that. I think, and I, I'm actually, I know this is like a little side note, but is your staff really excited about this move? They've got to be kind of geeking out too. You know what? We we have the cutest team. They're, they are so lovely. They're just all really lovely. And my husband, they see my husband as like a bit of a bad, big bad wolf, you know, but they're always really happy when I'm there. They think I'm a nice one, which is just so funny. I mean, we're both nice. It's nice just like You're a the hug in the box, though. You're the hug. The <laughs> yeah. Box. yeah, so they say, they wait for me to see if he gets out of the car and then they wait to see if I'm getting out of the car. They're like, yeah, Amy's here, you know, which is just adorable, isn't it? you know what, they're all lovely and they are excited and, and that's important because this next month is going to be, you know, a very destructive month. You know, they've got to move the whole the whole warehouse. And yeah, they're being fantastic. They're fantastic. So like it's I said- It's a fun new change for them too. It's like, yeah. that would be so exciting to get a new office, to get a new yeah. workspace. It's all clean and new and pretty. And Ugh. yeah, and we like to look after them. We're getting them a new coffee machine and a new place. <laughs> oh, they will appreciate that to no end. <laughs> to yeah. no end. No, I'd have to. I'd have to imagine like they'd be pretty. They'd be pretty stoked about it too. Yeah, okay, yeah. so. Okay, so how do how do all of our lovely listeners find you? Where can they follow you? Where how do they connect? And also, so, will you come back? Can we do this again? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay. I have okay. lots of things to talk to you about. Like your new baby. I know, I know. Life will be so different, um, but we'll have to, um, in 2023, after the big move and everything, we'll have to do a whole nother, um, whole yeah. nother episode. But I yeah. know that they're going to want to shop. I know they're going to want to visit. I know they're going to want to follow. Yeah. So where where do we find you? How do we so, stalk you? Amy Lucy Designs is my Instagram. And it's actually my Facebook as well. Um, you can find me on Pinterest if you want to look there. Um, and then obviously through my Etsy shop. Um, Which is the same, right? The same. I mean, I'll link it for the, yeah. I'll link all of this, but Amy Lucy yeah. Designs on Amy Etsy. Lucy Designs. Yeah. I mean, cool. all right, you branding queen. Yeah. You did a good job. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. you. I mean, it is true. You have so much more to say. It is a little sad, but thank you so much for your heart. Thank you so much for your willingness. Thank you for your friendship and for sharing and just thank you. I'm really glad we got to do this. You've made this very enjoyable, Lizzie. I'm very grateful. Very I'm grateful. over here having a ball. So if you're having fun, we are like two peas in a pod. <laughs> Amazing. <I got> <laughs> thank you. Okay. Well, I will talk to you soon and I'll tell my friends we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye, Amy. Bye. And that's a wrap on this episode of How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you're looking for more resources, head on over to howtosellyourstuff.com where you'll find podcast show notes, all the links from today's episode, the blog, courses, coaching, and more. If this episode was helpful to you, awesome. The greatest compliment I can receive from you is a rate, review, and subscribe on this podcast. Not only will it allow us to connect again on a future episode, it lets me know I'm providing you with value and helps other people find this content more easily. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for your support. Have a great day and see you next time.